there, hello there, my name is HW. Thank you so much for watching Tone Jiggy TV. Today, I wanna talk about maybe the most important concept video thing you could ever understand about almost any platform, but to me, certainly the Kemper. Is that a stretch? No, I don't think it's a stretch. I don't think it's a stretch because if you understand these three must-have EQs for the Kemper, and really, if you understand the placement of the EQs and how that affects what you're doing, you will be able to EQ yourself into Valhalla, into the, the um, communion of the holy. No, I don't know. The point is, you got to understand these three EQs, okay? So let's, let's, let's look here at my Kemper here. My Kemper gives me a signal chain. I've kind of covered this before, but I just wanted to make it real clear. My Kemper gives me a signal chain. Here's stuff before the amp. Here's the amp. It's obviously a profile of the amp, but we're gonna call it the amp. Stuff before the amp, like stomps that would go on your feet before the amp. Stuff that is the amp. And then you're gonna get here into stuff after the amp. And this simulates a studio setup where the cab and microphone are here in the cabinet. And then we're sending it out to outboard effects before it hits the channel that the, that the producer uh, is controlling at the mixer. You know what I'm saying? And, and we really want to get that, that beautiful tone, that whistle tone, you know? Like when a pretty lady walks by. That's what we want people to do with our tone. And so here's three things we got to understand. We got to understand how EQ affects um, the tone and how what we're changing is just as important as where we're changing it. You could say that again. What we are changing is just as important as where we're changing it. Can I get an amen? I heard you in the back, I heard you. So, um, the three locations I wanna talk about are before the amp input, the amp itself, and then after the amp. Now, there are more locations than that, right? You could, you could, you, and I'll talk about that at the end, but let's first start here. Let's start with this EQ block. I'm using the Mars Astra High 2, and it sounds like this. I'm gonna throw it on the bridge pickup. <laughs> The Mars Astra KT66's cool thing. Now I'm gonna turn on this, uh, this little graphic equalizer that I brought in here. Okay, and this is on the profile. So what are we doing? We're cutting 80, we're cutting 320, we're cutting 640. HW, you're taking out all the low end. I know guys, it's a humbucker and we're gonna boost 2,500, 5,000, 1,000. What was this for? This was an EQ that I wanted a P90 to sound like, um, kind of like a telly. So again, without it, with it. Without it, with it, that to me is so drastically different. And you could even do that with the neck. Check it out. With with uh, with nothing else on, just this profile and the guitar neck. This is a Strat neck in this case, right? Now with it. Now what's important about this is what is it doing? Obviously it's making it brighter. The purpose of this EQ is to make this sound kind of like a telly.
Why not, okay? Telly-esque enough for my bar band that wants to play a little, a little. Telly-esque enough, right? Let more highs, more treble, whereas this is more mid-rangey. Might not sound completely different to you, but trust me. You listen on something other than an iPhone, you're gonna hear it. It's, it's the, it's subtle and not subtle. And the thing that's important about it is that we are actually applying an EQ before the amplifier section sees anything. So the first EQ to understand, the first very important EQ location is preamp because that EQ can be seen as modifying the guitar's pickups. If we want to turn this guitar into a telly here, I'm going to take this sound, I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to give it one of these. We're adding some brightness, we're adding some flair, some twang. hear it on the lower strings that we're changing these pickups. You really hear it there. Yeah, that's where you get it. The high stuff is there, but that telly twang comes in in that, that kind of the lower stuff. Of course, it's twangy on the high end, but the humbucker's already fairly bright. We're editing the guitar's pickups. That's the point. If you want to change the sound of your guitar, see, we could come in here and we could change this. And let's let's get get a good shot of the Kemper here. Let's put this all here. Let's change this to be. Um, uh, oh, where are we at here? Let me come down to equalizer. Uh, are we working? What are we doing? Here we go. Uh, equalizer, and I'm gonna go to this. What do I got here? Let's go to a cut the mix EQ, okay? Uh, no, no, that's not what I want. I want the graphic equalizer, not the studio equalizer. And for some reason I have no presets on this Kemper. Uh, no problem, we will build the presets ourselves. Let's say we want a lot more mid-range. We're gonna come in here and we are gonna push up our mid-range frequencies that we wanna make fat. So let's boost 640, let's boost it by 5 dB. Let's boost 320, let's boost it by 2 dB. Can we see this? Two and a half decibels. Uh, about on, on 320 hertz. Then we'll do 640 on, uh, on four and a half. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna, we're gonna boost some of these Marshall higher mids. Uh, and then we're gonna let everything else go down. We're actually gonna cut 5,000. We're actually gonna cut 10,000. And uh, we're actually gonna cut 80 and cut 160. What's this gonna do? It's gonna make our guitar sound fuller and thicker and bigger and listen to this. Now, fuller, thicker. Wow. Uh, we get a lot more of that honk that's not really in these pickups. Now, you wanna hear it on the humbucker? Check this out. Listen to this with it. Now we get this push thing. We're pushing a lot more mid-range into the front. That's so important to understand. We're gonna drive the front of the amp differently. That's like, come on. That is like so different and so we just, we were playing a different guitar. Now let's talk about this. Let's say we want to go more mid-range. We want to do the same thing. Or let's say we want to go brighter, but we're in the amp. Well, I'm going to come right here. Now you might go, HW, this doesn't look like the, the EQ I have on my amp. That's okay. 
That's okay. Think of this like a channel strip EQ if you'd like. It's, it's the channel strip EQ on the microphones. Why not? It's, like, it's controlling the app, but whatever. Um, it, it, it's, an, it's, it, it's somewhere in there. Treble, let's turn it way up. Presence, let's turn it way up. Oops, I forgot. I have to leave them at zero with this new, uh, with this new Kemper update. Let me show you that first. sound. It's a rich sound. I like it. Let's make it brighter. Brighter! Let's scoop the mids. Let's turn the bass up a little bit, make it real fendery, real fendery bright. Uh, boom. Bass is up. Mid range is down. Two decibels. Now we sound like this. Like I picked up a different guitar, a different amp, right? Sounds different. Sounds different. Now let's let's cut the the bass. Let's boost the mid range. This is where we're changing the voice of our amp. We're not changing the voice of the pickups now. We're changing the voice of our amp. We're gonna cut down this treble now. We're gonna cut down this presence. You don't have to treat treble and presence the same all the time, but for for simplicity's sake in this video, I'm going to do that. Um, now I'm going to boost the middle. I'm cutting the bass just a little bit. I'm certainly not boosting it. I'm going to boost that mid-range a lot. We're almost up to four there. Now it sounds like this. some tone man that is a different amp we were fender and now we're back to like mid-rangey martial thing and that's just by really boosting this up a little bit now let's get let's get all this back to zero uh, uh cut to back to zero boom we're back to zero on the eq and now we're going to leave this alone now to, to remind you this is what our guitar sounded like <laughs> That's the in-between sound on the neck. Fine, martially guitar sound. Now, what I'm gonna do is turn on this studio equalizer. What are we doing here? Well, we're just giving some kisses to the low end. So let me exaggerate it a little bit. You heard that a moment ago. We're actually gonna boost at 200, we're gonna boost a lot, almost two. We're gonna boost 3,500. We're gonna give this some more, some more uh, Kerrang. Is that the right? That'll be some Kerrang frequency, 3,500. We're gonna give this um, a nice little boost at 510. That's some mid range, and a nice little boost at 2,000. Here's what we're really doing here. This is, I think that's the cut the mix EQ. I just modified a little bit. It's not the uh, hot knife EQ, which you can find in the Tone Junkie Tone Tools, which is free on the tips and tricks page of the Tone Junkie website. It, it, and those are all free. Cut the mix is built in here, um, and and I'm so I've done cut the mix, but modified it a little bit, and it's gonna sound like this. It, we're just kissing some sweetness frequencies, so this is not gonna be a huge, huge difference. It'll sound different, but it's not totally revoicing the guitar. <laughs>
And in practice, you know, you kind of get this sort of thing. But you turn it on and you get you can hear the kisses. It's different, it has some, some, some kisses in there. So what I mean by that is there's different accents, right? I'm gonna leave all that alone and I wanna show you, let's just push the bass a bit. We've got this 200, we're gonna push that bass way up by eight decibels, now listen. That is now full in that bass region. Let's bring it down and bring this down to like 100. Now, if you're on an iPhone, we're already probably below where you're hearing anything, so uh, please don't even watch this video any longer. We're getting into stuff. You're gonna have to put in in-ears or you gotta go get some bigger speakers. The iPhone just doesn't produce frequencies down here very well. hear it on that low string. Get that nice grumble in there. Okay, now let's really accent, um, let's, you know what, let's roll off the highs. Let's take this 3500 and let's move it up to like 6000, I'm at 59, and now I'm gonna cut it and we're gonna get a big high end roll off. All right, check this out. Hear how my 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 presence there is now disappearing, but I'm what I'm doing is I'm getting to choose where the shelf happens, where the the decibel drop happens. So what happens is at 5,900 hertz, we're dropping down 3.1 decibels. So right there, the signal's going boom at three at 5.9 at 5.9 we're going boop we're down, and then for the, for everything up from there. Everything higher than 5.9 is also reduced by that much. So it's like a little pivot point. And we're gonna bring that way down. We're gonna take it way down to 6.4, negative 6.4. Now listen. It's thick, man. It's thick now. You come on the bridge here. We've got that high end rolling off. Listen without it. You hear that? You hear that? Woo! Baby, that's some tone. That is, um, to me, really, really incredible and, uh, a very righteous sort of thing to do. You just get a completely different. Now we're getting that kind of twangy tone, but we're actually uh, cutting a lot of that high frequency. Almost making it sound further away. Guys, I can turn both of these on, and now we get this. What do we hear? We're boosting highs and then we're cutting highs. What do we hear? The highs are cut, right? They're cut compared to this. Take off the boost, take off the, uh, the cut. Because, because what comes later in the signal chain always has the most effect on the signal chain. If you boost something later in the signal chain, it's not subject to the effects of all the things 
uh, that came before it. So the later we are in the signal chain, the, the, the more change we get. That's why changing a speaker in an amplifier uh, can actually have, it's half your sound. Um, you wanna take, now if you take a Fender and a, and a, and a, and a, a Mesa Boogie, dual rec, those amps are sufficiently different that the speaker almost doesn't matter. You'll have totally different sound. But take a Plexi and a JCM 800, put them through the same V30, you'll have a much more similar sound than if you take two amps like two amps that are much more similar, but you have very different speakers. You can take amps from uh, a year apart at Marshalls, uh, 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 very close to each other, same model, and if you use an H uh, speaker and an M speaker, a heavy magnet and a medium magnet, and you put those together next to each other, you will have a much uh, uh, you have way more of a different tone. The, the, the difference will be dramatic. Um, those speakers do a lot. Um, but if you take um, two Marshalls that are quite different, maybe one uses KT66s, one uses EL34s, one uses, uh, uh, I don't know if, if any use EF86 preamp tubes, but use different preamp tubes or something. Um, and maybe they even have multiple channels and stuff. You'll have a sufficiently different amp, but you both put them through V30s. You'll hear that common characteristic. They'll be different, but I would say they might even be more, um, more the same because of that speaker. So what we do in the back actually has larger effects. You do a little mid boost there, it mid boosts everything. You do a mid boost up here, you get a little thicker pickup sound, but it might not actually change the whole amp. You could boost a bunch of mids up here, but if you got a Vox AC30 or a super scooped twin, it's gonna come out with no mids. You get what I'm saying? Later does more than earlier, and that is kind of a cool thing uh, to understand. But look, when you modify before, we're changing the pickups in the guitar. So with nothing, you know, add some high end. It's, you can hear it, uh, probably not on your iPhone. Boost the amp section, why not? Do whatever you want, come back here, cut it all. Man, I just love tone so much. And this is the type of thing that I hear when I listen to guitars. If you want the on the record Marshall sound that you get a lot of times, cut some high end over here. Learn how to do that trick that I just did because that's a Marshall trick, man. You get those Marshalls and they're over here and they're just like. just something, but you take that off and you get that much more amp in the room Marshall sound. It's just that extra brightness, whether it's in the mix or not. A lot of times that's that can be changed with a microphone or with a producer changing things up. That's just... That's just how it goes. Hey, I'm NHW, I hope this has been helpful. The must know three EQs, I'll throw this up there um, so you guys can can uh, uh, can get to know this one. Um, I'll throw this up there as a free download on the Kemper Tips and Tricks website uh, uh, page on the website. And forgive me my playing, I'm in the middle of a, of a tremendous flu and my temperature is probably a, a 101 degrees and uh, uh, I think I had 100 mistakes in this video. So please excuse me if my timing's off, if I even seem a little bit, uh, uh, I, I am, I am absolutely, I feel like death. I'm an HW. Thank you so much for watching Toe Junkie TV. HW, out. Nothing gets in the way of tone. Not even the flu. Not even the flu. Come on, man. HW, tone junkie. Let's go.